In this video, we're going to spend just a few minutes looking at our Flow Builder tool. Of course, each flow is unique. They're called custom flows for a reason, right? But we do want to at least talk at a high level about the process of constructing a flow, what a flow is, and the basics of what every flow needs. Certainly, we can add more complexity. We can increase endpoints that are being utilized all kinds of fun things we can do with our flows, but want to go through a basic overview with you so that you understand at the basic level, this is how a flow works and this is what it needs in order to run. So let's get started. We're first going to go to our flow builder tool. As we check out the left navigation here, this hammer icon is where we can find all of our tools and we're going to click on flow builder. This is our essential view, right? This flow builder, flow builder, excuse me, view um, is going to show where we add a source, where we add a destination. Up here, you can see this test mode is up here. This is available for you to be able to run your flows in test mode, kind of get an idea if everything is, is looking good, is running correctly before you actively deploy something into production. I um, wanted to give you this view before we actually dig in at a more granular level. So this is where we would go. We would add our source. As you can see, we have almost 400 pre-built connectors, pre-built applications here. We have databases in this first section, universal connectors. So for those that we do not offer pre-built connectors, our universal connectors kind of serve as a blueprint. They allow us to connect almost anything to anything. And then we have our expansive list of pre-built connectors here. If you know what you're looking for, you can just do it here using a full search, full text search. There we go. Let's try Salesforce. Um, just something that a, a lot of people are familiar with. We would type in our source. We would choose what we would like to do. We have the option to export records or listen for real-time data. Listening for real-time data, um, it is essentially creating an export However, we are setting that export up to run based on various triggers, like placing an order, initiating a return, shipments going out, etc. Once you select what you want to do, you have the option to create from scratch, or if you have existing flow steps, you can grab one of those there. From there, you would go ahead and make sure you have connections established, and then we would add our destination following a similar process here. I want to go ahead and show you a flow that's already built out, give some context. Looking at a blank screen doesn't give a whole lot to work with, so I want to make sure you see it in action. I'm going to choose one of these pulled from a Shopify to NetSuite integration that we already have set up here. You can see, obviously, there are a lot more than just our two steps, right? We don't have just our export and our import, a lot of other things that we have put in here. But I wanted to be able to show you we're going to start with that export. So we're starting with NetSuite. Once we choose our application, we are going to end up on this screen here. This is where we would name our export, create a connection, or use an existing one. That drop down is going to allow us to grab existing connections or create. And then we're going to have various fields that we need to fill in based on the application you're working with each is going to look slightly different. So this is where the, the custom comes into custom flows, right? We know we're creating an export. We are telling the platform what to pull from this application, how to do that. But the individual steps are going to be different just based on what application you're working with. Always consult your API documentation for those specifics. So in order to know, you know exactly what I need to put here for record type, for my saved search type, all of that is going to be outlined or should be outlined in your API documentation. One thing you should always see is defining your export type. So export types, we have the option of all, which is just going to export all available data every time the flow runs. Delta exports only modified data. So only things that are new or updated since the last time your flow run, ran once, as that name implies, it's going to sync it once and then it's going to get flagged. So that record is flagged. It's not going to get synced again. And then limit exports a limited or set number of records as determined by you, the user. You are always given the opportunity to preview your data here at this field. I'm getting an error because this is just kind of a test flow that we've set up. But ideally in that parsed output, you're not receiving an error. You're just going to see that output there. As you move on, we'll go ahead and discard those changes. I'm going to move 
to our very last import. Whoops. Gonna move to our last import here. There we go, we'll try dragging. This Shopify import is our final import. If we're working with just a two-step flow, right? Just our export and our import. That's what we will have. Gonna look really similar. Uh, so as I mentioned, custom flows, of course, are custom. But at a base level, we need an export, we need an import. With our import, we are similarly selecting an application, making sure we have a connection. And then we're gonna have different options based on the application you're working with. Typically, regardless of what you're working with, you are going to have to define the API name and operation here. And you again have that option to preview the data. I always recommend previewing at each step. I would rather know if something's going wrong now than at the very end when we go to run our flow and suddenly things have gone awry. So you should have that option to go ahead and preview there. The last step before any flow can run would be our mapping. And this trident symbol here is going to help us access that mapping. We're gonna have some additional videos about mapping types. So definitely check those out if you wanna learn more about mapping. Uh, maybe you're having some struggles with different fields, figuring out what type of mapping is best for you. But this is where we would access that. Our mapping is going to be, again, custom based on what you're looking to do. We do have two mapping types, Mapper 1.0 and Mapper 2.0. We have lots of documentation for each of those. I'm gonna go ahead and add a knowledge base article about our mapping to this video in case you're looking to learn more. But once our mapping is set up in place, everything is good to go. Essentially, we have you know, our fields matched up from source to destination. We again have that option to preview Assuming everything was active, up and running, we would have an output here before we run our flow. And then before any flow can be run, it needs to be enabled or turned on. So we can turn that on. Um, I'm reaching an error here because I am maxed out on my flows. But once we turn that on, we can go ahead and run it. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it in test mode so you can see what that looks like. It's going to show you it in progress. This one, of course, is not active so we're going to get that error here but in the bottom you're going to be able to see your flow running and if we wanted to see one run in real time let's go ahead and just open up another flow here this flow is currently enabled let's try here we go one that we can enable and run perfect so what you're gonna see down here in this run console would be your flow running at each step you're gonna get a quick readout if you had a success or an error we can see that there was an error produced and we can go from there this account as a reminder if you haven't checked out our other videos it's a testing account it is to show you all kinds of different things so yes we have lots of errors broken connections um, just to be able to show you what that looks like but these are the basics of running a flow from start to finish. We are gonna get more complex. There are other videos that you can check out for additional things like data resources, things like adding in filters, transformations, flow branching, uh, adding in some complexity there as well as additional endpoints. But wanted to make sure you have the basic idea of what it takes to set up and run a flow.